Yeah. <laughs> so what are we doing today, man? So we're gonna take this perfectly good working engine and make it not that. <laughs> so Matt and I followed the workshop manual, uh, going through the maintenance schedule, taking all the boxes off. Um, and first step was obviously the PCV valve. Uh, you can see us cleaning the TLC brake cleaner, uh, removing any oil off it. Um, there shouldn't be too much, but obviously we had too much crankcase pressure, so there's quite a decent amount of oil in the filter, which needs to be clean. Um, so yeah, it was a good step to get it to be done. Um, next, uh, next step after this was opening up the valve covers. Um, removing the valve covers allowed us to access the injectors and tappets. And um, yeah, so this was necessary. We we plan to pull the injectors in this um, video, test the injection pressure as well as spray patterns um, and while the injectors are out we will do compression tests. Um, having this done we will also reset tappets and, and make sure all is good there. Um, Obviously this is a time lapse of Matt and I removing the valve covers and injectors. You can't see too much um, from the side. Okay, well, the but, um, we'll just, as as they were filthy. Up, there was a lot of carbon we'll buildup on there. the nozzles. Um, and um, it turns out five of our injectors were not atomizing. So those need to be changed. Um, yeah. What you doing? So with all the injectors pulled, next step is injection pressure tests. and doing that with this little tester here. We set up a little jig on our on our vise. Um, I filled it with fuel. We've got our injector already plugged in there and you just kind of pump it. There's a couple of tests you do. Um, a little bit of a, it's a bleed, bleed valve leak test. Um, you do a flush and a pressure test. And yeah, we did all of those. Um, as you can see, I'll show you. Um, okay, so Matt's actually decided to get behind the camera, put me on the spot. Um, we got our injector pressure tester here. And as you can see, we've got it set up on the bleed screw uh, leak detector. And what we're doing is putting on a, a pressure of 2000 PSI and seeing if there's any leaks for 10 seconds. Right now it's good. Next one, to test injectors, you've got to take the bleed screw out and pump it and see where the injector sprays. Check the spray pattern and its pressure at the spray. And so yeah, cylinder number two. Okay. The <laughs> Quick little update, Matt and I have had to put that one on hold. Uh, we've ordered a compression test adapter because our compression tester, it's, I mean, there's no thread there to screw it into. So we've come onto this bad boy to uh, start s testing these injectors. Matt's uh, working with the PCV valve. Um, and Ooh, she's clean, boy. All right, guys. So we missed the drain, but um, we're draining the heat exchanger. On this port engine, we have to take the whole heat exchanger off for you if we want to clean the stack, because the stack comes out that way. This engine's fine because it comes out and draws out, but this one we have to. So. First step is to drain the heat exchanger and then we'll get it off. Okay, with that drain, things like removing this fuel filter and pump, um, there's a couple of hoses obviously from the seawater side as well as the coolant side we've got to remove and then we can pull it off.
Not too much persuasion. Look at that. <laughs> hey, and she's off. The heat exchange removed, the stack is pulled out. Um, obviously, a good uh, cleaning solution is just a diluted HCL solution with copper. It does not uh, corrode it too much, so get rid of any calcification. Um, as you can see here, just dipping it in, and we'll reverse it every 10 or so minutes, clean it off and install it back. Um, got a bunch of engineering jobs on the go, injectors in the corner there, coolants, tools all over the place and a lovely clean engine room. So Matt right here is just pulling off the oil cooler, which is behind the corner of the engine there. Horrible place to be uh, while I attack the thermostat there in the corner. Let's get that done. Having the thermostat off, just cleaning up uh, each surface, just a whole bunch of gunky gaskets. So First starting with a little utility knife, scraping it all off, um, with the f um, just keeping that flat edge, um, and then working my way through the grits as you'll see, starting from about 120 or so, just because uh, there was quite a bit of corrosion, and ending up on 320, 400 wet sanding. So, yeah, ended up with a nice smooth surface and almost as new, as they say. test the thermostats uh, we threw them on the stove in some boiling water and obviously the heat just as the engine would heat up the coolant heats and expands the springs you can see the difference there between the two that's how you know that they are functioning properly so. now time for assembly just um, re-tapping some of these holes Let's go first with the gaskets and then first the first that house and in place. As you can see there, inlaid manifold got some oily residue. Obviously the PCV valve was um, the culprits. Maybe some too much crankcase pressure pushing up some oil into the inlet side of things. So not such a good thing. Setting them, checking that tolerances are good. Um, yeah, got everything set up. Uh, got our feeling gauge ready. Just going through the manual, following our exhaust and intake specs. It seemed like everything had been set all right on this engine, so we're just checking everything is correct and that the bolts are talked up. There's 
one and two done. Now time for rotation. As you can see, we're going from TDC to TDC here, rotating the crank through 180 degrees. Um, of course, you start on cylinder one, and then on this engine, it goes to number three, you can see here, then seven, and so on. So just following firing order, setting each tappet as we go. Yeah. yeah, so we got a bit of jumping around with these jobs. Um, we got our heat exchanger soaking um, as well as waiting for some gaskets. So now we're back to the heat exchanger, just cleaning it up and got the gaskets on and sending it in. This oh uh, crying on video. <laughs> it's fine, eh? Fine. No, it's nothing. It's nothing. Sorted. Got everything back. Talk to 25. We're gonna filter that and chuck it in. So it should be good. Catch Matt making a mess again. I can't even defend myself. During the season, we had a small fuel leak coming from our injection pump. Um, we traced it to this one of these top lids, there's a leak on it. So here you can see us pulling it off and obviously scraping everything down, changing gaskets, uh, making everything yeah, leak free for the new season. Matt and I finally got our compression test adapter um, but unfortunately the quick release fitting did not fit our compression tester so we had to make some adaptions as you can see Matt's stoked with our, our achievement um, yeah so she's ready to go and we can do some tests uh, starting on cylinder number seven there went backwards um, Closing this up, 30 bar all round, so we're smiling. A variation of one and a half bar, so 5% is a good little variation. And then across to that, that side. Both the engines compression tested and happy with the results. Um, we put together a starboard engine just with all the um, correct injectors so we could run up and have at least one running engine. So as you can see here we're starting with 
accident number one or injector number one and going through um, getting them already talking the injection lines the nuts and set nuts or all, all the different um, components ready for fire up so this next section is always always the best part for an engineer after rebuild or any sort of big work is the startup just <laughs> making sure she runs so engine only firing on a couple cylinders who cracked the fuel lines and bled the remaining air just to help her help her on her way okay let's go 